for this simple little project, you need a dish towel, and uh, you can get these at the Dollar Tree. You can get it at uh, packs of four at Walmart for like four bucks. So, and then you're going to need some fabric. And the first thing you want to do is, you need. I kind of did mine on sort of grid like. I cut it. I made the shape of how big I wanted the bottom piece to be, and then the fold over piece where the button is going to be. I, I traced out the with my quilter's ruler that and then I kind of cut the edges off to make it a smooth long edge so that it's going to fold over and button like that once it's all sewn together. So it is about 15 inches long this way all the way down. At the top part it is four and a quarter inches across. At the bottom it is seven and three quarters inches across and the towel is usually about 15 inches so it's going to be gathered a little bit in there. And the first thing I want to do is take this piece, we're going to lay the towel aside and these two pieces I want to press them I'm going to get that crease out of there. I, I had pressed it into a crease so I could measure it out. This is something you can do freehand, really easy. You don't need a lot of skills to do it. You do need to know how to use your buttonhole maker, which I have a video on if you would look up um, buttonhole and a fate so twisted. Just put that in the search on YouTube and you'll find my video. And I'm pressing this end under so it makes it a lot easier once I've got these two pieces sewn together. I don't have to push it in and press it. Um, I'm folding over about a half an inch and pressing it so that it's already nice and neat once I've got these two pieces sewn. Now the next thing I want to do is put them with right sides facing together. Line everything up and then we're going to sew all the way around leaving this part open. Okay. So I've got a cute little button picked out and it kind of matches the color of the towel so it, it'll put everything together nicely. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to decide how far down I want this to fold and just so I have a nice marker for that I'm going to press that and I'm going to mark where I want the buttonhole and now I'm going to go to my machine and I'm going to make this buttonhole on this side, this end of this thing and then I'm going to put sew the button on here. If you need to know how to do the buttonhole just look at my buttonhole video which would be um, a fake so twisted all one word buttonhole and then buttonhole separate word you know anyway and you'll find my video I have a really quick easy video on how to do buttonholes so now that I've got my buttonhole done you can see it right there I need to put the button on and I since I made that crease and I know where I want to fold it down I just have to fold it back to where I press that crease on and I'm gonna hold it in place and stick the chalk through and just mark a little place in the middle where I want that button to go. So now I know I want that button right there. And I'm going to take my needle and thread and knot it the thread at the bottom. So now, since I haven't closed this bottom up yet, I'm just take my hand through here and find that marking and bring that up. And I'm going to go back in a couple of times just so that this doesn't come loose when I'm 
securing the button on. I'm going to take the button and I'm going to feed that through. Now once you've secured the button with a few passes through, then take your thread and wrap a little bit of it around the button. That keeps it up so it's easier to get it through the buttonhole. That's actually something my mom taught me years ago. And then I'm going to go through the back of the fabric. That puckered a little. I got a little over anxious with that, but that's okay. And I'm going to turn it to the inside so you can see that I'm going to make a nice knot. So what I'm going to do to make the knot is pass this needle through some of the thread and the fabric and let it form a loop at the end. You see that loop is kind of went into a figure eight. And I'm going to go through this loop making sure that I'm actually wrapping the thread through the loop, not coming back through and undoing it. And then I'm making a knot. And then I like to just pass it through a couple of times because I don't want that button going anywhere. I don't want to give this to a friend and then have it just fall apart in the wash. So let's do this a couple of times. And then to make sure that my it has just a little bit of an extra tail on it. I'll just run it through the fabric once or twice and then cut the thread. So <laughs> I'll put the button through the buttonhole and it looks pretty good. And I'm just going to press everything before I go to attach this dish towel because I want to make sure that it's everything's laying nice and flat. Now, what I'm going to do is take the dish towel and open it up and you, this has a back side and a front side and it, it is kind of obvious which is which when you look at it close up you can tell so I want the front side to be facing this because I want it to attach to the stove the I want it to attach to the oven door with the button facing out because it's part of the decoration so I want the front side of the towel to be on this side where the button is what I'm going to do is take an end of the towel. And you could try to gather this with your machine, but I just don't I don't I don't see that really working. And I'm going to hold that in with a pin and I'm going to put the second end in, making sure that you kind of got them even. You got the same amount pushed up into the the piece here. Just going to hold that straight up with the pin and then we're going to gather it in the middle here by hand. Now, I'm going to sew across the bottom and I will probably do two lines just to make sure that the back and the front are together and then it will be finished. And you could add a decorative um, trim on the bottom like some lace or some matching fabric of this, just a really thin like maybe one and a half inch trim. But I'm not going to do that on this one. I'm just going to finish it up by sewing this together and I'll show you the finished dish towel when I'm done y'all so there you have it there's the finished dish towel I will um, admit that I think the bottom of this it's just a little too long to hang on your oven door it's probably going to drag the floor so if you get a towel that's as long as the one I have is you could cut a little bit off of the end and just do a little tight zigzag stitch to close it up or put like I said some matching fabric trim on the bottom but it's just really long to hang on the oven door. I mean, this sucker's about, probably about 24 inches long, I would say. But anyway, still, there's the project. It turned out pretty nice. Not a really hard thing to do. It's good for beginners if you're wanting to get 
used to your sewing machine start off with a little project like this and you will um, get used to how your machine runs and, and how um, you need to adapt your way of sewing to your particular sewing machine. So I hope you guys enjoyed this little tutorial. That is it. Peace y'all. Bye bye.